lovelies, welcome back. My name is Tej Giovanni and today we have another iconic video. Today we are going to be recreating the Bratz tracksuit from Dolls Kill when they did their whole collaboration. So y'all know I had to come through with the DIY, the tutorials, because I got y'all. I got y'all. If you would like to know how to recreate this Bratz tracksuit, please keep watching to the end of this video. Okay, so these are all the pattern pieces you should have. You should have um, a front pants piece and a back pants piece. Front um, hoodie piece and a back hoodie piece. The actual hood for the hoodie. <laughs> have a sleeve piece and then last but not least there's a little pocket piece for the hoodie as well. I will link a actual like digital pattern that you guys can print out down in the description box just to make it easier for people who just want to like get their shit and go. This is the fabric. So now I'm going to cut out all of my um, pattern pieces uh, and start making this track suit. So. I have my two uh, front pieces and back pieces and I pin them together at the shoulders and I will sew it at a uh, half an inch. Okay, so this is what it looks like when um, the shoulders are sewn together. Now I'm taking the sleeves. This is what the sleeves look like um, when they're not folded. Okay, so what we're going to actually do is fold the sleeve and then mark the midpoint. So here we go, this is pretty much the middle right here. Then we're going to take our um, hoodie pretty, <laughs> pretty much and open it up like this, boom. All right, so once we have that done, this is the armhole right here take one of our sleeves and align this uh, midpoint of the sleeve to the um, shoulder seam that we have. I'm going to pin with the right sides together. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to continue to pin the sleeve to the hoodie all the way around with the right sides kissing each other. So I kind of like to pinch them together because it helps me to understand what's the right side and what's the wrong side. So this is what it should look like uh, when you're done pinning everything together. It should have this little curve right here. So I'm going to do this for the other sleeve and then I'm going to sew at a quarter, I mean a half an inch. But I do have to say I have a little bit of extra fabric um, left over that I believe I can just cut. I'll probably take care of that afterwards. Okay, so this is what we got working so far. So now we're going to sew the sleeves and the side seams together. So we're going to pin the armpits together, pretty much where the armpit should go. And then I am going to pin along the side seam down here. And then also the open seam on the sleeve as well. The um, pinning should look like this. And then I am going to sew at um, a quarter inch for the side seam of the hoodie and then a half an inch for the sleeves. Okay, so this is what the hoodie looks like so far. We are almost done. It's looking good. I tried it on and it fits pretty well. So now it is time to sew the hoodie part, like the actual hood situation. So what we're going to do um, is that we're going to place one on top of the other like this. So I pinned along this curved edge and I will be sewing there. So we're going to attach the hood to actually the scoop area right here. As you see, this is little S curve part that actually goes, that's where it attaches to the collar. So I'm gonna flip the hood out. First find the middle of the center back. So of course you kind of just fold it in half and then wherever that half point is, you put a pin right there to mark it. Oop. And then we're going to line this like seam right here to that center point and pin those together. Right sides kissing, of course. 
and then you'll continue to pin all along the collar. But yeah, I pinned the whole hood around the hoodie collar. So now we're gonna go take that to the sewing machine and sew at a half an inch. I pinned the um, edge, the raw edge of the hood all of the way around and I double folded, hemmed it. Now I'm going to sew it pretty much, I think on the top, top stitch it on the top and top stitch it on the bottom. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that on the sewing machine. I'm probably not gonna show that part. Now we're going to deal with, oh shucks, okay. I'm trying to center it. We are going to now move on to the pockets. Okay, so what we're first going to do for both pockets is fold back um, this raw edge, this raw edge, and that raw edge um, a quarter inch. Okay, the pocket should look like this once you're done pinning it down, so I'm going to sew it. All right, so what we're going to do is align the pocket, the edge of the pocket to the edge of the hoodie. Try to make sure the hems line up as well, as best as possible. It doesn't have to be exact. Oh shit, and I cut these wrong. I cut these wrong. Watch, and this one's like, oh, it's not, is it shiny? Yeah, but this one's darker. Yeah, that's because of the pile. I know. If I cut it, if I cut it, it, it oh, like that, this whatever. way. Mm -hmm. That's all right. It'll match the arm because the arms are dark too. No, they're not. Oh, okay. Moral of the story is make sure you cut your pattern pieces in the same direction. So you can sew it one to two ways. You can either go this way all the way around and make sure you don't sew this part down or you can go the other way. Boom. So this is what our hoodie looks like so far. So we just have like two things to do left and we're going to move on to adding the ribbon, not ribbon, ribbing, a uh, little like elastic part at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a measuring tape and we're gonna measure the end or the edge, the bottom of the hoodie to see how long we need our ribbing to be. So I'm gonna need about 39 and a half inches of ribbing, which I was like, oh crap, because this is 38 inches, but I will stretch it as I sew to make it a little bit longer. So what we're gonna do now, I think I want, so I want the bottom rib part to be about two inches long, I mean two inches wide, and so we'll need four inches in total, plus a little bit of seam allowance, so I think I'm gonna do four and a half and I'm going to measure on um, four and a half inches down and then mark it with the pin, so. Okay, and so I marked everything with pins and I am going to cut along the pinned edge. So then I do wanna point out something, which it's just me being like super psycho. <laughs> This pink does not match the velvet pink like at all. This is way, way, way lighter. And so I will dye the ribbing a little bit darker of a pink. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll be back to actually sew this onto the bottom of the hoodie. Okay, so this is how the ribbon came out. As you can see, it's a little bit more like bubble gum pink. And so now we're, what we're going to do is pin it to the jacket. Also, um, if you're gonna do any lining, which I do recommend, I would say to do it now. For me, I decided not to do it because it's just a little bit extra labor and um, it would just cost a little bit more, which I just didn't feel like doing. I just want to get the look. So what we're first going to do is find the midpoint of this hoodie and then also of the ribbing. That we are going to fold this 
ribbing hot dog hot dog style i'm going to take the ribbing and i'm going to align it with the edge of the hoodie making sure that the right side is touching the ribbon and then i'm going to pin those together and then i'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the hoodie okay and then also match the midpoints together All right, so once those three things are done, we are going to take this to the sewing machine and I will stretch the ribbing out as I sew because there's more hoodie than ribbing. So I'm just gonna stretch it enough so that it lines up with each other. Okay, so this is what the hoodie looks like once we're done pretty much doing almost everything. We just have to attach the zipper. So I have this zipper. It is a separating zipper, okay? Not the regular Douglas Megala zippers. It's a separating zipper. I made this mistake two times. So make sure whenever you make hoodies, jackets, just anything that has to completely detach, separating zipper, okay? And we're going to take the zipper I'm gonna zip it up, uh, zip it down a little bit, and we're gonna um, turn it so that the zipper is facing down. Let's place the zipper on one side and make sure that the farthest side from this side, if that makes any sense, is the one that's laying on the raw edge of this garment. I'm going to pin the zipper from the bottom up because the bottom is the almost like the most important part because you want to make sure that that's even. Okay, so I pinned everything together so that when you flip this over, that this is what you'll pretty much see. What we're going to do now is um, just sew this part first. I changed my presser foot off camera <laughs> because I had a slight emergency. No! So this is a zipper foot. Uh, it came with my machine, so I'm pretty sure it comes with every machine. I also like put a picture. So we did finish sewing one zipper or one side of the zipper and it looks like this. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So what I'm planning to do is to unzip it I am going to undo it completely and then flip it like this so that the edge, so that the teeth are pretty much facing out and then of course pin it from the bottom up. So I'm going to do that and then we'll sew it the exact same way. So that's it for the construction of the hoodie. We will now move on to the pants. So now it is time to um, sew the pants. I am going to take the back pants pieces and lay them down with the right sides up. All right, so that's the back pants pieces. I'm going to now lay the front pants pieces on top uh, with the right side um, kissing this right side. So um, as you can tell that the crotches, the crotches are two different shapes. So the front crotch is more like a, um, like smaller curve and then the back crotch is a bigger curve um and that's just to fit like you know the butt part and so they're normally like two different sizes and usually the back is a little bit longer or like deeper of a curve than the front so don't worry if it looks uneven because it's supposed to now what we're going to do is pin these two together and we're going to pin them on the inside leg and on the outside leg. So we're gonna line up the crotch first and then pin the rest. But I'm first going to align the crotch, like the bottom curves together and then pin. All right, so like that. And then we're going, going to pin the rest of the pants together. And so now we're going to sew at a half an inch on both side seams. So the, the outside side seam and the inside side seam. Okay, so this is what the pant legs look like once 
We're done sewing. I do have a whole bunch of excess seam allowance because of the way I cut the patterns out. So, but we're just gonna leave that for now. I wanna sew the pants together to make sure that the fit is okay before I cut off the excess seam allowance because we might need that if there's any fit problems. So anyway, now what we're going to do is pin this little U-curve situation together. So what we first do to connect the pants together is to connect the crotch together. So I'm taking one crotch and then another one and just like literally lining them up so that they kiss right sides together. Um, and then I'm just gonna pin it. So it should look like that. And then you're going to continue to pretty much, you being nosy again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you're gonna continue to like kind of pinch the two raw edges together with the right sides kissing and pin up the, um, yeah, just up the pants. This is what it should look like once you pin the front together. And so now I'm gonna flip it over and pin the back together. And then we'll also sew at a half an inch on the sewing machine. Okay, so this is what the pants look like so far. I did do a little bit of fit alterations, but it's usually the alterations I have to do for pants is to um, just kind of take some in on the back. But now what I'm going to do is just trim just the extra fabric that we have going on for the seam allowance and all that stuff. And then um, we will attach the waistband to um, the pants and also hem the pants and then we'll be done. Okay, so now we're going to hem the pants. I am going, oh shit, I forgot my pants. I am going to fold up the raw edge of the pants. They're still flipped inside out. Flip it up a half an inch and then we'll sew. Um, yeah, and then we'll sew it down and that's pretty much it. Okay, so this is what um, the pants look like when they're hemmed and pinned. So now we're going to go sew at a half an inch. And for the pants, for the ribbing, uh, I want the ribbing to be inch and a half wide uh, when, once we fold it over. So that'll be three inches wide that we're gonna cut it. So I'm measuring, oh, we actually need to do four inches again anyway because of seam allowance. We have cut out our ribbing. So what we're going to do now is fold it kind of hamburger style, um, just so that the two edges meet. And we're going to pin along that line or along that edge and then sew this together to make like a circle um, because we'll be sewing this in a circle for the pants. We will um, just sew right along this edge. Okay. What I'm going to be doing is pretty much folding the ribbing in half hot dog style and I'm going to be pinning it right now fold the ribbing in half hamburger style. And we know that this needs to go, oops, we know that this needs to go in the back. You can also do it for one of the side seams as well, but I'd just rather this go in the back so I just don't have to see it. So um, since this will be in the black back, I'm going to flip it over. So we are going to fold it again, hamburger style, just to find the midpoint um, or the middle of the ribbon, which is right here. And I'm going to put a pin. Okay, from this center point, I am going to take my ruler and measure an inch out on both sides and just make sure that the ruler is as centered also in the middle as possible. And I'm going to mark it here and then same thing on the other side and mark it here. That's where the grommets are going to go for the drawstring. These are the grommets. Uh, you've seen this in the Doja Cat Say So cat costume video. I'm not going to go through how to actually uh, do grommets. I will make a separate video for it. So let me do this really, really quickly and then I'll continue to the next step. Okay, so this is what it should look like once you're done editing your eyelets, and, well, I mean grommets and all that good stuff. Okay, so of course with um, 
every kind of loop thing we have to do, <laughs> if that makes any sense, we have to mark the um, four points. So I'm marking the, the center back. So it should be in the middle of the two grommets from these two points on either end. And then we'll do the same thing for the pants. So of course the center front and center back seams are in the center. And then even though the side seams should be the other two points, our um, body isn't even like that. So <laughs> I'm going to mark it where this like fold is right here. If you can even see it, cause I am completely out of frame. Great. Okay. And then now we're going to pin the ribbing and the pants together. So I'm flipping the ribbing this way. And then we're gonna pin the fronts together. Okay, we're gonna pin the backs together, lining up the raw edges together as well. It's very, very important. Okay, and then the side. Okay, so now I pin the four sections oops, together. Uh, we will also be stretching as uh, we're sewing as well, just a little bit, because um, I did cut it down a little bit less than the um, circumference of the actual pants, um, because I feel like this ribbing specifically works better um, when it's just stretched out. So um, I'm going to take the sew sewing machine, sew it at a half an inch, and then we'll be almost done with the pants. This is what the pants look like with the band. So there's literally one more thing we have to do to finish off the construction of the pants. Drawstring. And so what we're gonna do is pretty much like how we do like um, the triangle bras. If you haven't seen that, I will link those down below, but we're just gonna like fish it through the tunnel of the um, band, just like we do like the, the strings for the bikini top. So what I'm going to do since this already has aglets on it, I think I'm just gonna try to fish it through and go through this hole right here and just kind of like worm it through this tunnel. Take your time because this will take forever. <laughs> this is really annoying. And then that's what it should look like once it's done. So um, now we are going to move on to the rhinestoning and you know, and then after we rhinestone everything, then everything will be done. So that is it for this video for part one. You have learned how to sew the tracksuit uh, and this is how the tracksuit looks all together. But you will learn how to rhinestone the tracksuit um, in the next video. I'm pretty sure I'll be releasing the video either um, Wednesday, like Tuesday, Wednesday, but turn on your post notification so you get notified when I do post and please subscribe so you guys can follow that video as well. Um, I'm not sure exactly when it's going to be posted, but it will be posted very, very, very soon. So turn on your post notifications for that. Also, please check the description box down below for where I get my materials from and also, um, just tips that I couldn't add into this video because it would have been really really long so lots of tips and notes down below listed in the description box um written in the description box and also of course to get the sewing pattern it'll be linked down below and also if you want to purchase 
this tracksuit pay the sister up i can hook you up okay all right that is it for this video so stay tuned for the rhinestoning video and i hope you guys enjoyed it and as always please love yourself and i will see you next video Mwah.